Namaste. My name is Vivekanand. Welcome to this Hangout on Air. Let me start my timer. Uh, we had a change of um, venue for our uh, co-host. <laughs> Is that what I am now, a co-host? <laughs> yes, you are. Is that in my contract? Is that in my contract? <laughs> and because of that, uh, he, uh, since he has changed the uh, his physical location, um, we were doing a bit of a, a rearrangement. So, sorry about the slight delay in starting, but uh, we are starting. And we have it under control. Yes. That is progress. Okay. I am... What a good, what a good segue. <laughs> <laughs> I have started uh, my timer and let's get going. This is the sixth episode in a series that I have started with a view to help entrepreneurs who have lots and lots of ideas and would like to succeed with lots of projects. In this episode, the focus is on progress theme. This episode is going to be about how Prince2 handles progress. Monitoring progress and controlling the project determines whether a project is successful or a failure. So, this episode discusses this aspect. I have great pleasure in welcoming my panel. At the moment, it's David. <laughs> A panel of one. <laughs> As usual in the agenda for today, we begin with just a minute, where each of us takes center stage and gives 60-second elevator pitch followed by a short presentation covering the topic of the day. Today it's going to be progress theme and how it relates to Prince2 methodology. Then we shall have a discussion with the panel members sharing experiences and insights. I shall talk about what is coming up in the next episode and we conclude for today. As in the previous episodes, I aim for half an hour, but I would not dare to cut off um, anybody, include, that includes myself, when the discussion is lively and adding value. We have come to just a minute section. Each of us will have a minute each and we shall give you our 60 second elevator pitches. Within a minute, each of us will try to explain why anyone should contact us, how it would be helpful for them, and how can they contact and connect with us. There will be a penalty if you go over a minute, which is meant to be fun. The penalty is you will have to say the sentence, integrate, simplify life three times. I apply the same rule to myself, but the penalty for me would be decided by David and any other panel member who may decide to join. Let me start the whole thing going. I have a one minute timer set up here. Namaste. My name is Vivekanand. Wake Technology is my company. I believe in living a simple life. I believe in thinking differently. I am proud to share my beliefs with Steve Jobs and Leonardo da Vinci who said simplicity is the ultimate in sophistication. Here's my simple way. Avoid the cowboys. Work with the Indian. Let the Indian handle technology and you live an integrated, simple life. Maybe you have lots of projects and you are struggling to find someone who can integrate and simplify. Contact me through my Google Plus page or my website 
wake-technology.com. Hope that came in within 60 seconds. It's our guest's turn now. I shall call out each of your names and start a timer. David, it's your oh, turn. It's, that's, that's me. I better... <laughs> uh, well, you... you um, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me to... Uh, uh, to, to participate with you, Vivek, it is uh, something that I, I look forward to every every Monday morning. It's a good way to get my work week kick-started, if you will. Uh, my name is David Leopold. Google knows me, and it's important that Google knows me as Small Biz David. So if you go to my, uh, if you go inside of Google Plus and you type David F. Small Biz David Leopold, it will take you to my profile and taking you to my profile a most important part of what I do is the development of a community called dreaming with entrepreneurs in Google Plus if you'd like to dream with us and collaborate with us I will invite you to join our community excellent that was well within uh, 60 seconds um, and uh, yeah, we have now come to our uh, topic of the day. Uh, little presentation. Let me get this going. The agenda, as usual, is answer to three questions. Why control progress? As we all want progress, you may be wondering why one should control it and then I shall explain why. How does Prince 2 help in controlling and maintaining progress? What can a small business do to make sure progress benefits them? Let me start with the answer to the first question. Prince 2 answers it as follows. To establish mechanisms to monitor and compare actual achievements against those planned in order to provide a forecast for the project objectives, including its continued viability and control any unacceptable deviations. In other words, if you do not control progress, then you may have unwanted progress in some areas and not enough in other. In fact, this is probably the most not notorious reason why some companies, which appear to be very successful at the beginning, fail horribly after a while. The reason they would then give is we grew too fast. As an example, look at this image of a garden. There are lots of flowers, lot of growth, but the garden still does not look good. Why? Because growth has been uncontrolled. Let me tell you a snippet of a story from Star Trek as I have been doing in the previous episodes Star Trek Enterprise the next generation season 3 and the episode entitled The Defector this story illustrates how a project should be managed progress controlled etc the story is the Starship Enterprise gets a distress call from what appears to be a Romulan scout ship from the neutral zone. They want to know more about the likely intentions of the Romulans as they are known to be very cunning and scheming. The Enterprise moves closer to where the Romulan scout ship is and they find that a Romulan warbird is attacking it in the neutral zone. The scout ship moves on to the Federation space and the Enterprise crew manage to beam aboard the Romulan defector. But the Romulan seems to have something 
hidden with him what is in his hands and that could be lethal as the Starfleet knows so little about Romulans anything is possible he then claims he has some vital Romulan military information that Starfleet should be aware of he says the Romulan want to occupy the neutral zone and they are establishing a base on Nelwana 3 he urges Enterprise to attack Nelwana 3 and destroy the cloaked military base which would be fully operational within the next 48 hours but the commander Will Riker is not convinced and later on the Romulan defector states that he is actually Admiral Zarok of Romulan Empire and he wanted peace in the region now after ushering the Romulan defector out of the room they continue the meeting commander data states the lessons that have been learned from the history of Romulan attack patterns you may remember that one of the prince two principles is learn from past experiences after studying the sensor logs Commander Jordi LaForge uncovers further issues with the claims by the Romulan defector. Jordi says, though the Romulan warbird appeared to chase and attack the scout ship, when the scout ship had some engine damage and slowed down, rather than overtaking and capturing the scout ship, it didn't. Instead, the warship slowed down to match the speed. Jordi observes that there were three speed fluctuations, but the warship kept its distance. In other words, they didn't want to catch up. In Prince 2 terms, this is an example of an alert engineer raising an issue when something unexpected is observed. You see, the Enterprise crew do not just do their jobs. They are alert and involved. They never say anything like, that is not my job, or I'm only doing my job. They, they, none of them say either of those statements. Captain John Luc Picard gets some input from the Starfleet. This is similar to what happens in a corporate environment where management would specify acceptable tolerances to the project variables and point out lessons learned from previous incidences. Captain John Luc Picard wants to make sure that the enterprise does not travel into the tra neutral zone unless it is absolutely necessary because Romulans would treat that as an aggressive move and they will have an excuse to respond with force he also states that the enterprise has less than 48 hours to prevent war or inadvertently start one he also requests commander data to provide his clarity of thought being an android data does not have emotions clouding his mind and he wants data to keep a record of everything that happens so that history will have the benefit of dispassionate view in Prince to terms this is called as keeping a daily log which then becomes part of the lessons learned once the project is complete Later on, he also has a meeting with Lieutenant Wolf in his ready room. As viewers of the TV series, we would not know what exactly is going on until the end. Well, you know how TV serials are. They always want to keep you interested, don't they? But that's how every business appears to everyone else.
Later on, there is a message from the Klingons, and the captain directs Mr. Worf to handle it. This is the case of Captain Picard managing risk, as we would learn later on in the TV episode. The Enterprise then warps over to Nelvana 3, fully aware that Romulans would be monitoring their every move. However, at Nelvana 3, Enterprise does not find any indication of a base. All the clues seem to have misled them. Captain then confronts the Romulan defector. The Enterprise does a quick turnaround, only to find two Romulan warbirds decloaking and beginning to fire disruptors, warning shots at them. The commander of the Romulan ship accuses Enterprise of acting in an aggressive manner and they now have to surrender or else be destroyed. But Captain John Luke has other ideas. He orders Lieutenant Worf to signal the Klingons to decloak their warbirds. Three Klingon ships decloak surrounding the two Romulan warbirds. So the Romulans are outnumbered four to two and have to withdraw. Let us come back to planet Earth and present day, shall we? It's now time for a mind map. I need to do a screen share and as usual I shall pin David and then proceed. While I'm doing that, David, please tell us your thoughts. It never ceases to amaze me how uh, you are able to take a Star Trek story and simplify it <laughs> because I don't think there's anything simple about Star Trek. <laughs> you, you, you use it as a simple story, but you go into all the, the story detail, and um, it, it's always enjoyable for me to not only listen to the story in, in your viewpoint of, 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 of Star Trek, but then to make it into an application of, of Prince 2. And um, it, it was just, uh, it, 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 oh, you do a great job with that, Vivek, to, <laughs> to take the Star, Star, Star Trek and, and, and put it, uh, put it in, in your mind map, as we are now seeing. <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> this is a sophisticated mind map, and I use a software called as iMindMap, as I had mentioned in the previous uh, episode. It does have its own presentation mode, but I find it to be a resource hog, which is a shame, really. So I shall use screen captures and explain rather than use one more software. I hope you can all see the mind map screen. To me, the screen seems to be blank, but uh, I hope it is working. David, it looks it looks uh, looks fine. The, 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 obviously, the type is small, but the concepts are all presentable, very presentable. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I would be zooming in, and so I have just zoomed into the first branch of the mind map. This slide shows the purpose of Prince 2 progress theme. I've actually already explained this. Um, so let me move on. Uh, I explained it under uh, why we should control uh, the progress. Now this slide shows how different levels within the organization handle progress. Let me explain further in the next slide by concentrating on smaller section. As per Prince 2 organization structure, Every level above can monitor progress, 
compare achievement with the plan that has been approved review the plans and options against any likely future situations detect problems identify risks initiate corrective action and authorize further work the controls available are reports in prince 2 there are two main types of reports there are time driven reports which are raised and read at regular intervals and then there are also event driven reports which are raised only when events happen there are exception reports and end stage reports this slide shows the level branch of the mind map so that it is easy to remember the project board plays a very important role and let us look at the project board branch of the mind map in greater detail the project board has several controls available and um, let's look at the reports that I mentioned a couple of slides ago the checkpoint report highlight report are raised at regular intervals and the intervals are determined by the project board exception reports are raised only when there is an exception such as a major problem arising a risk becoming a reality a supplier delaying delivery etc etc end stage reports are raised at the end of every stage of the project as mentioned before as per Prince 2 every project is broken down into multiple stages at least two and end stage report is to be raised at the end of every stage the project board also controls the project by its ability to authorize different things like project itself project initiation project stage project closure etc the project board is given tolerances within which the project has to operate maybe by the corporate management in the Star Trek story I mentioned the Starfleet gives directions to Captain Picard to remain within the Federation space but get close to Nelvana 3 and take appropriate actions the captain gets authorized to take action within tolerances tolerances are typically for time cost quality risk benefits and scope that is the full project board branch of the mind map let's move on to the next branch the project manager branch the project manager gets inputs from team managers who are specialists in their fields and they raise checkpoint reports for the work packages that they are required to deliver the project manager has several controls available the project manager will have to handle changes and raise exception reports or change requests whenever the tolerances for time cost quality etc are about to be exceeded the project manager is responsible to raise daily log issue register product sale product status account risk register and quality register project manager has control over authorizations for work packages and progress updates based on checkpoint reports this is the full project manager branch of the mind map so that covers the whole mind map we have now come to the end of the topic of the day presentation and let me come back into your view by coming out of 
screen share. Uh, we have come to share experiences and uh, I need to pin uh, David and uh, as I do that, yeah, uh, David, your comments. You, uh, you've given us a, a lot to think about uh, today, Vivek, and uh, um, a couple comments. I, I, I was uh, kind of intrigued by, you know, the theme is is uh, progress theme. That's that's the theme of the day, if you will. That's that's the discussion point. Uh, but your example and how to best understand that and describe it and see the shortcomings of um, progress, not progress in and of itself, but how we get to that progress. Mm. Uh, you, you talked about progress control, but you uh, had a very interesting juxta juxtaposition of progress and control saying that the problems come when there is uncontrolled progress. So you mm. just uh, had a juxtaposition of, of those two two concepts as a very uh, a very interesting um, uh, thought there. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I think that needs to be stressed, mm -hmm. you know, the the mind map is a very sophisticated um, system, if you will. Mm -hmm. It's a system. It it describes how things should best be done and if you follow the system you will move your business forward mm -hmm. uh, and those are the things that, that are supposed to happen. Uh, but uh, the small business person might say, wow, there's too much stuff going on there. I can't do that for my business. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll be spending too much time doing those things. And the, the interesting concept is if you spend time doing those things in mm. the fashion that you have described, the business will move forward. It has to move forward. There's because there's a process and a system in place. Mm -hmm. So the organization, and, and that, that was part of your mind map, what, what does your business look like? What does your organization look like? It might be, okay, I am the organization. Mm. I am the driver of the organization, uh, but my business collaborates. Mm. There's a collaboration between myself and you, Vivek. Uh, mm. We both have very, very small organizations, mm -hmm. but our organizations get bigger when we collaborate with one another mm -hmm. because you bring a skill set to the table that I don't necessarily have. Mm -hmm. You are very... Uh, process driven, very detail oriented, and that's a, that's a part of my life. Well, I, I'm doing a whole lot better on the processes, mm -hmm. but um, you bring that detail <laughs> that is so very important for what? For a progress theme to be developed. Now we're we're, we're going we're we're con we're in that continuum, that circle. That okay, we start here and we 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 go out, but we're back to that point where there needs to be a progress theme. The progress theme has to be developed with a system, with a uh, a detailed system, and and when you can do that and put that in place in your business your business will move forward. So, mm -hmm. wow! <laughs> You've given me a lot to think about. I hope anybody else viewing uh, today can, uh, can pick up uh, uh, half of what I've picked up because then they'll be moving their businesses forward. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a... Uh, I, I agree. It's, it's a lot to think about. It's a lot to... Uh, that that's that that's uh, really actually the big picture. I mean, uh, um, as, as someone said, you do need to think big. If if you think small, you you would always remain small. Uh, so when you think big, you also need to think of all the things that are uh, you you are supposed to think of and. Uh, uh, 
I, I don't remember who said that, but someone was saying that you can run your own uh, little business, but it becomes it becomes a business only when you have systems in place. Ah, <laughs> there's the individual. There's the individual that said what you are saying. Well, there's probably other folks, but he's he's the originator of mm. what you just said. And to, to to expand upon what you just said, Vivek, and we we ought to tell um we ought to tell uh, the folks viewing this is unrehearsed. I mean, you had it, and, and it just so happens that Michael Gerber is one of my mentors, one of those individuals who I study, and very clearly, very clearly, he said, says, number one, a business cannot be successful mm. unless a system is put into place, mm. and putting a system into place allows the, the entrepreneur the visionary, the owner of the business, the CEO, to step back from the business if mm. he has to or she has to, so that the business keeps on running. Mm. Now, the other thing that, that, that Michael says in this book, and I was very, very blessed to interview Michael on this book <laughs> uh -huh. uh, as it was being released, uh -huh. uh, he, uh, he talks about a rule that absolutely has been ingrained in my mind and you just alluded to it without knowing you alluded to it and it's his, he, uh, in his book the most successful small business in the world the ten principles there are mm -hmm. ten principles that describe the most successful principle number one is and I want to use his words instead of my words <laughs> The first business, the first principle, a small business built rightly can grow 10,000 times its mm. current size. Mm. You just said that a business, if it, it needs to grow. Michael Gerber says that if you put the right systems into place, mm. they need to be put into place. The entrepreneur has to be working on their business and not necessarily in their business, mm -hmm. when they work inside their business, it it uh, it demands time. And mm -hmm. when when you're working inside the business, it's very very time consuming. And so mm -hmm. when we say we don't, I don't have time to do that. I don't have time to do that. Well, step back for a moment. We all have the same 24 hours in a day, <laughs> and it's how do we use that time? We set priorities. We set priorities. That's how we use it. So if you don't have time to do something that is important for your business, can I say shame on you? <laughs> can, I, can I be that strong in my in my words that if it's important to your business, you make the time to make it happen. You know, being in business is it, it, it's not an easy thing. There's no there's no ifs ands buts or whys about it. But you know what? It can be a fun thing. Mm -hmm. And there aren't enough entrepreneurs who have fun with their business because, and Michael kind of alludes to that when he says, we spent, most entrepreneurs spend too much time in their business and mm -hmm. not on their business. When you spend time on your business, that's the fun part. That's the mm -hmm. fun part about dreaming, about innovating, about where can, where can, where can my business go today? Where can it go today? Mm -hmm. I think if everybody stops, who who what was it? Um, was it Microsoft that had uh, the 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 quotation? Um, Where do you want to go today? Is, was that uh, Microsoft? That I think it was. I think that, it was. That actually said, "Where do you want to go today? Mm. Where do you want to go today? What do you want to accomplish today? Mm. What needs to be accomplished in your business today? And if you put the right system and process in place." Here we go. We're coming back to the beginning now. You have mm. progress in your theme. Mm. <laughs> you have your businesses move forward with the theme of your business. Wow. 
There's my take, Vivek. Mm -hmm. What's, do I get an A for the day, Vivek? Yes, yes. Because <laughs> I'm not leaving this until you tell me I have an A. <laughs> you certainly have. <laughs> uh, it's, it, it, it's been a, a, a great uh, discussion uh, so far. Um, I'm 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 just thinking. You you said uh, something about uh, you had a question um, about. Uh, I mean, uh, you you said some of this may be too much for an individual. Uh, probably that's that's the time when you uh, would say, okay, I can't do it myself. And uh, rather than saying, uh, since I can't do it myself, th that never gets done. Rather than saying that, maybe at, that's the time when you uh, start use the uh, other C word, collaboration. <laughs> oh, thank goodness for saying collaboration and not consulting. <laughs> collaboration <laughs> is much more. Uh, and you know I'm joking a little bit. I, I hate the C word consulting. I hate it with a passion. I once lost two very substantial contracts in my life in the mm -hmm. same week or two mm -hmm. because I was perceived as a consultant in two very large organizations. Mm -hmm. And one organization was a, uh, a $2 billion plus company and the other organization was a $400 million uh, company mm. and I was consulting for both of those companies uh, mm. and the one and then I had a third contract and there, here's an interesting parallel that I never thought about till just now mm -hmm. I had a third contract going at that time in my life it was the early 2000 mm -hmm. and actually took me into the 21st century those three <laughs> contracts mm -hmm. And the one contract that I was able to maintain was with an entrepreneur mm. who was starting a business mm. and he brought me on as a, as a part of his advisory board. We're back to that advisory board again that we talked about last week. Mm. Uh, he brought me on as a very intricate part because I felt and I knew him very well. He had been a mm. client of mine mm. and so we worked very, we collaborated together a great deal. Then he decided to start a business so he asked me in, in the spirit of collaboration to work with him to develop his business mm -hmm. and he, he was headed down the wrong direction. I said Kevin you're one of the best marketers that I've ever met in my life. Mm -hmm. You want to be a, you, you tell me you want to be an agency which is okay. Mm -hmm. There's nothing wrong with being an agency but I want you to take it to the next level. I want you to, to share all your expertise as a marketer and not only uh, uh, as a marketer it happened to be the uh, the industry was the insurance industry and mm -hmm. he and I had done quite a few things together in the insurance industry and I said become uh, the best direct marketer there is in the insurance industry share that with people and your business will grow mm -hmm. and guess what his business grew. He, he sold his business twice, Vivek, in under 10 years. <laughs> mm. He sold his business twice. Under seven years, he sold his business twice. Never told me how much he sold them for, but I guarantee <laughs> you he sold them twice for over a million dollars. I mm. guarantee he was that smart and that good. Mm. Uh, and he listened to my advice <laughs> as a collaborator, not as a consultant. <laughs> yeah. Consultant is uh, yeah, it's it. <laughs> there's a uh, there's a debate going on here in uh, UK about uh, uh, doctors, uh, medical doctors. Um, general, they, they are called as general practitioners, and uh, they are seeing a, a kind of a crisis, a sort of crisis in terms of. Uh, there are not many uh, doctors who want to be general practitioners, um, and uh, it's it's 
the reason being most of them want to be consultants. I'm sorry, I interrupted you. They want to be what? Consultants. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. That's very interesting because uh, um, I find the best doctors that I've had in my life, mm. and Lord only knows I've had to have some of the very best doctors in the world deal with some issues that I've had. Um, I found the ones that were best were, so to speak, hands-on. Mm. <laughs> you know, got in there and knew what was going on. Didn't consult as, they, yes, they were consultants, but they had hands-on experience mm. in where they were consulting. And not only hands-on experience, my hands-on me <laughs> and, and my experiences. Uh, so that's, a, that's an interesting uh, debate. Um, uh, I'm thinking of my, in the United States, uh, we have uh, somewhat general practitioners. Mm. Um, Primary care physicians is mm. is kind of what it's it, it's called, and uh, I'm thinking of mine, who not only is a as a wonderful doctor, he's also a wonderful consultant, <laughs> mm. and so I have I have used him in that capacity, not just okay, doctor, what's wrong with me? You know, what do I need to do? What do what what, what do we need to do? So it's a uh, and you know what, uh, Vivek, aren't aren't uh, doctors uh, entrepreneurs? In in, 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 in in that sense. I mean, they went to college to become a doctor. Being a doctor, you're building a business. Mm. Uh, traditionally, doctors are uh, not very good business people. Mm. And some of my best friends are doctors. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they just, they don't focus on the business. They focus on uh, the doctoring, be it hands-on or be it consulting. Um, you know, we, we, we need those specialists in the world. Uh, they're the ones that really deal with the problems, deal with the situations. So maybe, you know what, now that I think about it, maybe the general practitioner can be a consultant, making mm -hmm. sure that they put you in the hands of the right specialist, the right mm -hmm. practitioner who can take care of your problem. Uh, here, here for some, um, I mean, some reason uh, apparently the general practitioner is uh, seen as yeah you you are uh, you need to run your own business whereas uh, consultant is actually you more or less become not completely but more or less become an employee of the nhs the national health service here in the uk and uh, sadly it seems most of the new medical uh, graduates who can become uh, general practitioners are choosing to become employees rather than uh, start their own uh, practice. It's uh, it's not an easy thing mm -hmm. uh, to build to be a doctor in this country. Uh, and build a business. It, uh, mm -hmm. I mean, it's got it's as challenging as any, and has nothing to do with the talent of mm -hmm. that doctor, the talent of that entrepreneur. It has mm -hmm. everything to do with how screwed up the system is. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what it's all about here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. It it has been a, a great uh, discussion uh, with you, and uh, it's. Uh, um time to uh, I mean uh, we have come to Simplify a stage our lives. yeah uh, um, explain what's coming up next week and uh, uh, next week same time same place we would talk about quality theme of Prince 2 um, uh, here's a mind map and uh, yes, I would explain it all in the next episode. I, I missed the second word. It's quality what? Quality theme. Thing. Theme. Okay. And uh, yeah, I, I said. I got to prepare myself so I could do a trailer with you. Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, uh, we'll do that. Uh, now, now that your uh, uh, move is. Uh, you have actually moved and you are 
at least physically located at your new place, uh, you may still need to do um, to have a few rearranging and things like that, but uh, more or less you should be um, back in full force. <laughs> it took me three weeks to pack the boxes. We'll see how long it takes me to unpack the boxes. <laughs> Usually, it, 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 prob uh, it takes much less time to unpack rather than to pack because most of the time, I mean, I mean, that, that, that's, that's my experience. When you pack, you want to make sure that things go in the right uh, boxes and uh, make sure that you can uh, put them back in the right places when you unpack them. So you, if, you can, if you can find them. Yeah, uh, normally it takes uh, uh, more time to pack than to unpack. So no, I, 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 I'm just joking. Uh, this this uh, this move for me was um, well. I've moved so many times in my life. I do have a process down. I hmm. do have a system down, and uh, it it works. It worked very well for me. It's just I don't know what happened. Uh, I I lost sight of some of my boxes and. <laughs> I don't know where they are. <laughs> mm. You would you would eventually find them, but uh, yeah. Uh, we are now uh, uh, coming to the closing comments. Uh, any closing comments, David? Uh, yes. Uh, it was fun today, and I the, the real enjoyment I'm getting from this this whole series, Vivek, is seeing how it gets better every week. That's mm -hmm. That's what I, well, not that it was bad in the beginning, but we, 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 we try, we do things, we see what works. I look forward to your Star Trek stories and, and how, the, and you bring them back, and what's the entrepreneurial principle, and mm -hmm. how does it tie to Prince 2? I mean, it's it's been fun watching this whole series evolve. Mm. Thank you. Yeah, it's... Uh... Uh, it's been a great pleasure working with you as ever and uh, yeah um, I'm sure the viewers would all want to know more and as this is a series of HOAs there is more to come thank you for watching the show do please share the link to this show on Google Plus and YouTube and so on you can reach me through my Google Plus profile or through my website, wake-technology.com. My closing comments, as usual, are integrate, simplify life. Avoid cowboys and hire the Indians. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>